Have you ever been editing a video on Premiere and then all of a sudden everything starts to slow down and it makes you want to lose your mind? After editing video for 13 years, I know this pain all too well. So in this video, I'm going to share with you all the tricks I know so that you can get the most out of Premiere. Here inside Premiere Pro, there's a few settings that we can change right away and it will give us a big boost in performance. So the first thing to do is go up to File, go down to Project Settings in general, and then under Video Rendering and Playback, where it says renderer, change this to GPU acceleration if it's not already selected, and then go down here and press OK. Then go up here to Premiere Pro and go down to settings, and then go down to where it says memory. Once that opens up, you'll see installed RAM, which should have how much RAM you have installed in your computer, and then the RAM reserved for other applications. Just go ahead and drag this down to the lowest number it can possibly be. And then you'll see down here RAM available for Premiere is 29 gigabytes. So the majority of the RAM on your computer is going to be allocated to Premiere Pro and then go down here and press OK. Now, when you're editing your video, I like to stay out of the captions and graphics workspace as much as possible. And I also like to make sure that I keep the Essentials Graphics tab closed a majority of the time when I'm not using it because it seems to be very intensive on the software. Now, if your video is not playing back or if it's playing really sluggish, there's a few things that you can do. So go over here to the settings button under the program monitor and then uncheck high quality playback. And then you can also, if that still doesn't help, you can go down here and change the resolution for which the video plays back on the timeline. Now, if you see this red bar down here above your clip, that means that you're most likely gonna have to render out the clip before you can actually view it in full resolution and at full speed. So in order to do that, just take your playhead to the start point and press I on the keyboard for in, and then go to the very end and press O on the keyboard for out, and then go up here to sequence and select render into out, and that's going to render out that area on the timeline. Then once it's rendered, it should show green and it should play back at normal speed. Now, another thing that's helpful is to close out all the tabs that you're not using in Premiere. So up here, I have some tabs that I'm not using. So I'll go ahead and close out this one. I'm gonna close out the frame IO one. And if you need to bring back up one of those tabs, you can just go over here to window and then select whichever one that you need. Now, when you're working on a big project, you're probably dealing with a bunch of effects across multiple clips. So one thing that can really speed things up is disabling all the effects across your entire timeline. And you can do this by going up here and selecting the global effects mute button, and that's gonna turn everything off. If you don't see this button in your program monitor, you can just go over here to the plus button and then click and drag this wherever you want it to be at in the program monitor, and then just press okay. And then you can turn it on and off. One thing that made a big difference whenever I was first getting started was going up to Premiere Pro, going to settings, and then going down to media cache, and then going in here and deleting my unused media cache files. Just press okay. And if you haven't ever done this before, like it's gonna take a second, but it's going to help a ton. I also like to set these cache files to automatically delete after seven days and then just press okay. Now, if you're working with some really high resolution footage, one thing that you can do to save a ton of time is to create proxies. Now you can do this by going over to the project table and then selecting all the clips that you want to create proxies out of, right click, and then go down to proxy and select create proxies. Now the point of making proxies is so that you have something that Premiere can work with very easily that's gonna be lower resolution and lower file size. Now you're not gonna export at that, but I'll explain that in just a minute. For frame size, you have full resolution, half resolution, and quarter resolution. I like just going with half, that's what works best for me, but you can also experiment with quarter. And then for preset, I'm gonna go with H.264 MP4 proxy. For watermark, you can leave that at none. And then location, I always leave this at next to original media so that that way everything is staying in the same file location. And then press OK. Then that's going to open up Media Encoder and it's going to automatically start creating your proxies. Depending on how many clips you have, this could take a little while. So usually what I do is I will go in and create proxies first before I start the edit. And then once all the proxies are done, then I will start my edit. Once your proxies have been created, just go back over to Premiere Pro and then click and drag all of your clips onto the timeline. You don't have to go in and look for your proxies or do anything crazy. All you have to do is go up here to your program monitor and then click this button to toggle on your proxies. Now, if you don't see this button, just go to the little plus button here and then go up and find the toggle proxies button and click and drag that into the program monitor and press OK. Now just make sure this is toggled on and that should make things play back much more smoothly. Now, when you go to export your video, you don't have to do anything special because Premiere is going to export your video at the timeline resolution, not the resolution of your proxies. This next one is pretty obvious, but I find myself making this mistake even to this day. Make sure that you close out all the programs that you have open on your computer. So like right now I have Google Chrome opened up. I need to make sure that I quit that program and then any of the other programs that aren't helping me do what I'm trying to do right now. 
need to be quit. I used to store all of my files and media on an HHD or a hard disk drive and edit directly from that. But that was terrible because the transferring of the information from the files to Premiere was so slow. It made everything, I mean, it was awful. So the best thing to do is to get yourself an SSD. The ones that I use are the T7 Shield and the Samsung T7. I have a link in the description or work directly from your computer because if you're trying to work off of a hard disk drive these days, it's gonna make things so much slower. Now, if you know anything about Premiere, you know that it has a tendency to crash. So one thing that I've found that's helped with mitigating the amount of times that it crashes is to always make sure that your software is up to date. And this also speeds things up too. So go up here to your Creative Cloud app and then go over here to Updates and then go up to Manage Auto Updates and then just turn on Premiere Pro's Auto Updates and then open up advanced options and always make sure to import previous settings and preferences and then click done. And then you don't have to worry about going in and manually updating and you don't have to worry about if your software is up to date because it'll automatically do it for you. One other thing that you can do is the good old fashioned save your project and restart your computer. And I know that's gonna piss some people off, but I can't tell you how many times that I had no idea what was going on or couldn't fix the issue. I just restarted my computer, the problem was solved. Now you know all my tricks to making Premiere Pro insanely efficient. But watch this video next because I'm gonna share with you five essential things that you need to know before you edit your next YouTube video. All right, I'll see you in the next one.